Hello the internet and welcome back to Tony259, Tony 359's second channel. On the bench today I have an LCR meter, it's a Zoe ZTMD1. Now I've got this for free just to make sure that everything is clear, though I agreed with the manufacturer that my opinion would be absolutely unbiased. And this is not really a review, mostly because I haven't got a proper LCR meter to compare it with. So it's just my opinion and you'll understand in a minute why I decided to make a video uh, on the second channel about this tool which I wasn't planning to make. Now you might have watched a recent video about the, uh, like a quick comparison between this tool here, which is like the Atmel based, uh, very simple tool that you can buy on eBay everywhere. It's based on the design of a German engineer. If you go back and watch that previous video, I'm explaining how that works. Uh, it works totally fine, though obviously it is not a real LCR meter. When it comes to measuring ESR, it's given an approximation of a reading down at 10 kilohertz when it comes to a proper ESR meter. Now the Fenersi was a completely disappointment, the DSR reading was completely um, unusable, the tool is more or less unusable, I'm not using it, I'm, I don't know what to do with it. Uh, so when Zoe got in touch and said we have an LCR meter, I, honestly I said no, I don't need more of this here, uh, thank you very much, but I don't need it. Uh, but actually before replying, I went online, I, I, I thought, you know, let's take a look, you never know. And I stumbled into Defcom's repair channel, the link is down below in the description, hello Scott. And he got one of these and Scott has uh, more than one proper LCR meters and he was comparing this tool with the LCR meter. So I was curious to see what the um, ESR of this tool was actually um, comparing with the proper tool. Now, I don't want to spoil Scott's video too much, but it turns out that this tool is pretty accurate. <laughs> so I went back in touch with to Zoe and I said, why not? Because uh, also I had a look online and this tool is pretty inexpensive. I'm following the official link. I found I found this for sale at like $30. Uh, there, might, there must be something in the UK as well. I'll ask the manufacturer to send me a link and you'll find it down below in the description. So I got this tool and to be honest, when I got it, I thought, I don't like it. I don't like the shape. I don't like the form factor. It's another, you know, like gimmick. It's never going to work. I don't like it. Though, you know, I tested it and um, it didn't take much to actually like it. <laughs> I really like this little tool. It, it's, um, I don't want to say it's one of my the main tools I'm using now, but definitely when I'm measuring capacitors, that's my reference tool now. I don't use this anymore. Uh, this is much more accurate. It's pretty fast. And it comes with an important thing. This is actually using sine waves, uh, more or less high frequencies, to measure the uh, older components, switching off, to measure all the components, including capacitors. Let me show you. The tool is now set to read capacitance at one kilohertz. And as you can see on the screen, I have a one kilohertz uh, sine wave running. I can change the frequency to 10 kilohertz and you can see that switched to 10 kilohertz or to 100 hertz and that switched to 100 hertz. So when I saw that, when I realized that this tool was actually using sine waves to make readings, I thought, okay, well, I haven't got a tool that does that. And apparently it's even accurate, so why not? Again, if you go and watch the Fenersi video, um, basically these type of tools are Atmel-based devices and they don't use uh, the sine wave to make measurements. They use some kind of electronic wizardry uh, to come up with a very accurate, apparently, approximation of the readings. But, you know, when it comes to ESR, uh, the ESR it depends on the frequency you're reading it. Uh, this is approximating 10 kilohertz, if I understand correctly. This is actually selecting a frequency. So you can read the ESR at 10 kilohertz or 100 hertz, which I've discovered being a, an extra tool because a capacitor might read okay-ish at 10 kilohertz, but really bad at 100 hertz. And this is not going to tell you because this is approximately 10 kilohertz or probably would come up with something uh, not very accurate because the capacitor is not good. I don't know about that. In order to use this tool, you have to hold it like this. And at, at the beginning, I really didn't like it, but then I started liking it. And it begins with uh, an automatic feature, which I don't like. I don't like automatic features. Uh, I haven't tested it. I don't know, it might work totally fine, but I don't like it. And uh, manually, you can choose resistance mode. You know, I know everything is reading resistance nowadays, but this is working totally fine. It's pretty fast, 10 ohms, and it's a 10 ohm resistor. Uh, the next is the capacitor, but we'll check that in a minute. Uh, following is inductance. I have an inductor here, it should be 4.7 microhenries. There you go, 4.7 microhenries, so that's totally fine. The next one is diodes. I have a diode here somewhere. Not anymore. Oh, there it is. <laughs> and is reading the voltage drop of the diode and the direction of the diode. So, you know, if I swap it around 
uh, is telling me the diodes in, in the other direction. Now you might read that it says 0.6 volts. This tool can uh, test components with 0.6 volts, which is not too high, to be honest, and 0.3, and 0.3 is great. Uh, I think it's this button here, yes, because with 0.3, you are not activating semiconductors. So like in this case, this diode doesn't read anything anymore because that was a 0.45 voltage drop. So 0.3 is not enough. So 0.3 in theory is great for in-circuit measurements, though I understand that it's not great at doing that. But honestly, I'm not a fan of in-circuit measurements myself, so I don't really care. The next measurement is the continuity. It's actually pretty fast. And then we have the automatic mode. Now let's go to the capacitor uh, measurement. And before I get into that, I basically never recharged the battery. Um, it came from the manufacturer with the battery charge. I think it was like a month ago and I still didn't need to recharge it. So massively, massively impressed by this thing. Again, it, it just lives on my desk. It turns off automatically. There's a few options uh, in the uh, setting menu. Of course, you got the, the language, uh, whether you are left-handed or whether you are left-handed or right-handed, you can select which way uh, the, the menu is displayed, the, the text here is displayed. You've got the volume. Uh, probably I should turn it down a little bit. Oh, that's great. I didn't know you could do that. <laughs> Most importantly, there's a calibration feature, which I've done just before shooting this video. Uh, it actually asks you to calibrate a number of uh, different type of resistors. Now, if you don't have accurate resistors, you can just calibrate the shorted and open. So at least you got, uh, you know, like a basic uh, calibration. And obviously, as you might imagine, this is uh, upgradable. Uh, just before this video, I upgraded from 1.7 to 1.8. Unfortunately, there is no uh, reference online on what 1.8 is bringing compared to 1.7. So far, it's working fine, but 1.7 was also working good. To update, it's a bit cryptic because the update file is just a file but I found a video on one of the Zoe websites and basically all you have to do is to push the uh, left and right buttons uh, when the unit is switched off. So it turns on into USB programming mode. Then you plug USB into your computer, a folder appears, you drag, drag and drop the file and that's it. And it just happens and then it restarts and it's working. It worked totally fine. It takes a few seconds and now it's, read, it's reading 1.8. Now, when it comes to capacitors, which is the, fe the main feature I wanted for this tool, uh, again, once again, the, the, the main feature is the frequency. So, I don't know, random capacitor here. This is a, a 22 microfarad from a, an Apple monitor. And this is reading 22 microfarad. As you can see, it's pretty fast. It's reading now at one kilohertz. And the ESR is 600 milliohm. Now, if I change the frequency to 10 kilohertz, now 10 kilohertz can only read very small capacitors for whatever reason, but you still have the ESR and it's now reading 400 milliohms. And I can switch to 100 hertz. And now the ESR is much higher. And that's totally expectable because the ESR at lower frequencies is it's supposed to be higher than the ESR at higher frequency. Now, this tool here, is approximating 10 kilohertz. But with this one, you can go down to 100 hertz. And I understand from Scott at DEFCON that when you have a bad capacitor, you might still get like a reasonably good ESR at like 10 kilohertz or even better 100 kilohertz. But if you test it at 100 hertz, you might get something which is completely off. A good capacitor will have a slightly higher ESR, a bad capacitor will be completely off. So I found myself using this tool more and more often. This is another capacitor from the same Apple II monitor. It's the 2.2 uh, microfarad, 250 volts. Now, if I'm reading this capacitor with the frequency set to 100 Hertz, the ESR is 38. Now it's only 2.2 and at 2.2, you are expecting kind of a high ESR, but maybe 38 is too much. But what I can do, I mean, the capacitance is fine. I can switch to one kilohertz and now the ESR is seven. Uh, ohms, which is, you know, so much better. And if, if I'm switching to 10 kilohertz, now the ESR is four uh, ohms, which is so much better. So I now have some information that I didn't have before with either this tool or my multimeter or anything else. And actually I have here a brand new 2.2, uh, 250 volts capacitor. And if I'm going again, starting from 100 hertz and measure the ESR, 
This is reading an ESR which is much lower, it's uh, 12 compared to 38 that it was before. And if I'm switching to, let's go back straight to 10 kilohertz, uh, the ESR from this brand new capacitor is reading 4.3, uh, which is, I think it's, um, it's more or less the same of this, let's call it bad capacitor. Is it bad? I mean, as you can see, the ESR at 10 kilohertz is fine on both, but this one has a massively higher ESR at a 100 hertz. So I would say that probably this is not gone, but going, and I can find this information with this tool, but not with another one. Just out of curiosity, I don't think I've tested this capacitor here. As you can see, yeah, 4.6, which is what this tool is reading in 10 kilohertz. So according to this tool, I got 2.2 microfarad, 4.6 ohms, totally fine. But this is also giving me an extra layer of information because now I know that these capacitor at 100 hertz, it's actually reading pretty badly. Now, maybe it's not too bad, but maybe, you know, 38 ohms, uh, for a 2.2 ohm capacitor, 2.2 microfarad capacitor, maybe it's a little bit too high. And again, this brand new one is confirming that's probably a is a little bit too high. This is an SMD capacitor. It's supposed to be 10 microfarad. It's completely gone. It's reading 10 microfarad, but the ESR is 50 ohms, so it's completely gone at 100 hertz. If I switch this to 10 kilohertz, uh, it's now not even reading the correct capacitance, it's 4.2, and the ESR is way off at 24 ohms. So, you know, I like that I can actually check different frequencies, frequencies to actually confirm that there is a problem with the capacitor I'm testing. This is a 22 microfarad capacitor, it's only reading 10 microfarad at 10 kilohertz, uh, and an ESR of 7.5, which is probably a bit too high. Uh, for a 22 microfarad, and if I'm switching to uh, 100 hertz, which is where the ESR is supposed to be a bit higher and where a bad capacitor would, would read really bad, you can see that the capacitance is now 19, which is not too bad, but ESR is 17 ohms for a 22 is way too high. So I really, really like the, that now I have a tool that uh, gives me this kind of, again, layer of information, which I didn't have before, for a reasonable amount of money. Because again, $30 online and uh, there must be something in the UK as well. But you know, that kind of range, 20, 30 pounds, I guess. Uh, I'll find out the price. Uh, you, you can probably find a link down below in the description. This is another capacitor from the Apple monitor, one microfarad, and it's reading 5.7. Now, 5.7 for a one microfarad, I think it's totally fine. Uh, and again, this is approximating the 10 kilohertz reading. So let's keep in mind 5.7. And if I'm checking at 10 kilohertz with the Zoe, I'm reading 3.7, which is, you know, it's not too far away from what the other tool was reading. And it's reading basically um, 0.8 microfarad, so and 84 actually, so it's within specs. But if I'm changing this to 100 hertz, I'm now reading an ESR of 62 ohms. It's actually going up to one microfarad, but 63 ohms, that's, that's, not, that's not good. Uh, this capacitor is definitely bad. As a reference, I have a brand new one microfarad 50 volts. It's reading 0.97 and 8.3, which is, should be approximate 10 kilohertz. Let's see what the, the Zoe tool is reading. I'm reading 6.8 as a ESR, which is, again, not too far away. Uh, I would say it's probably okay. And again, the ZIF socket of that tool is a bit worn out, so probably that's not great. And at, one, at 100 hertz, oh, okay. And no, actually at 100 hertz it's reading 43, so it's even worse than that one. Um, I was aware that obviously with the smaller capacitance, the ESR uh, is going up, uh, up. I didn't know that at 100 hertz it's supposed to read so high. So that's something new for me. Again, something new I'm learning and um, another layer of information that I can use next time I'm testing a one microfarad capacitor at 100 hertz. Um, so great, I, I, really, I really like this to be honest. For the price, it seems to be working totally fine. There's only one thing I don't like about this tool and it's the, uh, the way it's, it's manufactured. I mean, it's okay, but unfortunately, I'm not sure how much you can see that. Uh, the tweezers came out from the box misaligned and I tried to bend them in place, but as you can see, they're kind of flexible, so they're never properly aligned. Uh, is that a deal breaker? Not really. Uh, but maybe the construction could have been better. That being said, again, bear in mind that this is a pretty inexpensive tool, so you know, I guess we can live with that. It's not a fluke tool, it doesn't cost £100, uh, it's apparently doing a good job, uh, the battery lasts a long time. Um, again, I've been using it for about a month for my, you know, repairs and stuff and everything, and 
it's become an important tool within my my tool bag. So uh, I'm not using this component tester anymore, at least for capacitors, and I'm usually not use the Fluke either. Uh, this is pretty good. And even when I need to check a resistor, I mean, it's so easy. You just grab this own resistor. You don't need leads. You don't need anything. I need to measure the resistor. There you go. And you get a reading of your resistor in, in a second. So I really like it. So I feel I can recommend this. And again, I'm not getting paid for this besides the, <laughs> besides the value of the tool that I received for free. I'm hoping that this short video with my opinion about this tool can help you out making a decision if you're looking for an LCR uh, meter. Now, obviously, if you get like a proper LCR meter, uh, you're probably getting something more accurate. I feel that this is like plenty of accurate. Uh, if I can even say that, <laughs> for like a do-it-yourself uh, kind of type of work. And it's very inexpensive, so why not? So definitely recommended. Thank you, Zoe, for sending this. And this is all I have today for this very short video. Uh, I didn't want to make a full review mostly because I haven't got a reference tool to compare with this. Once again, if you want to see these in action compared to other tools, take a look at Scott's video. It's linked down below in the description. And again, thanks, Scott, for uh, showing this to me. I wouldn't have accepted this without watching your videos. So I hope you appreciate this video. If you did, as usual, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below and consider subscribing to this channel and my main channel if you like this kind of things. Don't forget, I'm also on Patreon if you want to support my work. There is a free tier on my Patreon account if you want to join me just for more support. But if you don't want to join me, it's very much understandable. Uh, maybe you can buy me a coffee and the link is also down below in the description. Uh, but if you don't want to do anything, it's totally fine. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for your time here. That's it for now. I wish you a great day and I hope to see you again soon here on this channel for my next videos. Thank you very much and goodbye. Bye-bye.